Hi guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast. My name is Mina and uh, welcome back. This is episode 136. Today is Wednesday the 17th of April and um, yeah, I'm coming to you here from my home in South East England, just um, south of London and I live here with my husband, our two-year-old daughter and our two cats. So thank you so much for joining me. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. And if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking us out. I hope you enjoy what you see. And if you do, feel free to click like and subscribe. I, w I never really say that, but um, it does really help out the channel, helps like others find the, find the channel on YouTube and stuff like that. So if you are so inclined. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you can find me online in several places. I'm mainly on Instagram as Knitting Expat, and I'm also on Ravelry as Mina Philip. And you can also find me on Ra my designs on Ravelry as Knitting Expat Designs. And you can find the group, the group for this podcast on Ravelry as the Knitting Expat Podcast Group in the Groups tab. And um, and yeah, I think that's the main thing. I don't really do project pages on Ravelry. I think the last time I did project pages was like June 2015, maybe, 16, pretend, I don't know, like n a long time ago, 2016, I think. Um, so I don't really do project pages. I find it's not, it doesn't really work for me in terms of my workflow and how I do stuff. I find it very cumbersome and time consuming and it's just, yeah, I just don't enjoy doing it. So I've stopped doing it, but I do um, leave pretty comprehensive notes about my projects in the show notes section and to be honest most of the stuff I work on are my own designs so um, you know anything I talk about is like incorporated in the design in the pattern so um, doing separate project pages with notes doesn't really st I wouldn't be adding any notes anyway because what I knit is the pattern so and usually the pattern hasn't been released yet by the, when I'm showing it to you so uh, anyway I just don't find it works well for me um, so I've stopped doing that um, if you have any questions about anything that's not answered in the show notes which are below this video on YouTube in the description box and you can also find the links to every everywhere else you can find me down there as well if something's not working like a link's not working or um, a question you have isn't answered um, in the in the description box feel free to leave a comment send me a message I will be happy to answer that for you um, and yeah, so the only other thing I wanted to let you guys know about is I have um, a new pattern, well, two new pattern releases and a club release. So I wanted to talk about those really quickly. First up, I published the twist and slip sock pattern. So these I showed to you last time as a finished object. I finished these whilst up at Edinburgh for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And the pattern has now been published. And so you can find that online in my Ravelry shop as well. Uh, so these are called Twist and Slip. They're great scrappy projects. I use leftovers from another sweater project. And um, and yeah, I really love how these have knit up super scrappy and colorful. Um, they'll be great. They would be great for mini skeins. They'd be great for leftovers, which is what this was. Um, you know, you could do whatever you want with it. Or you could even do like a two color monochromatic version, which I think would look really cool. Um, there's lots of options for how you can work this. And obviously each section you can knit for as long or short as you want. It's very customizable um, as I try to make most of my patterns to be quite customizable. Um, so yeah, there's that. And the other pattern that I've released is the Waffle Cow, which is, which is this one, which you'll have seen. This went on quite a journey. I first knit up the very first sample um, for this back in November of last year, but um, I was trying, I was rethinking and reworking some ideas and thoughts I had on how I wanted it to be knit up and how it was going to work and writing out the pattern. So I finally reworked it and this version was knit out of Suburban Stitcher um, mini skeins on her sock base in a selection of colourways that she sent me. Um, Diane was very kind to offer yarn support for this. So yeah, there's actually nine mini skeins in the main cowl and I used a tenth mini skein for the cast on and the bind off. I think it's actually the other way around. I think that was the cast on and this is the bind off. So, um, so yeah, so it's very, again, customizable. You can use more mini skeins. You can use less mini skeins. You can make it deeper, shallower. Um, it's a, the pattern stitch pattern is a multiple of four. So you can cast on more, cast on less, um, you know, it's very customizable in that sense. 
Um, so this pattern is now available as either an individual pattern purchase or if you purchase my uh, mini licious pattern club uh, which i have a separate video for which i will also leave a link down below but it's the video before this on my channel um uh the mini licious pattern club um is a pattern club as the name suggests similar to the sock clubs that i've done in the past but all with patterns that use mini skeins as part of them so um the first pattern will be released on the first of may and i'll talk a bit more about that in a second but if you purchase the club you get this as your as a bonus pattern and so um if you when you purchase the club you get this as the bonus but if you um if you purchase this on its own and then want to go and purchase the club you don't get an extra discount so this pattern as part of the club is like i said it's a bonus but if you decide to purchase this individually on its own first and then decide you want to join the club there's no additional discounts and that's all very clearly written on both the pattern page for this and for the club and in the video i published with all the info about the club as well all that info that i go through in that video is actually on the club pattern page as well i just know some people like to hear the information rather than read the information so i offer both options and um and uh, yeah so the first pattern will be released on the 1st of may well at least that's my aim we're going to be traveling at that point so i'm hoping i'll be able to release it whilst we're traveling if not i'll publish it as soon as i can afterwards um so i hope people don't mind it might be a couple of days delayed but it should be i don't see a reason why i wouldn't be able to do it on the 1st of may but having said that i can't be i can't guarantee what my internet connection is going to be like it should be fine we're going to europe it's not like we're going to be in the middle of nowhere with no internet or phone signal or anything like that so we're going to be in major cities it's not going to be a problem i'm pretty sure um but i wanted to put it out there just in case it was um so so yeah so about that i wanted to go over yarn requirements i completely forgot to talk about this for the patterns in that informational um video that i posted because the only the only pattern clubs i've done up until now have been sock clubs so it's fairly self-explanatory what you need for a sock pattern you need sock yarn but i figured for these designs because you don't actually know what the design is going to be either whether it's going to be a shawl a cowl some other accessories whatever like i haven't disclosed exactly what they are they all are um i figured that's part of the surprise but they are all accessories um and so for the first pattern you you will need a set of um 10 gram mini skeins so either 10 or 12 i used a set of 12 10 gram mini skeins by nicole of hugh loco it's one of her color riot mini skein sets and a skein of an, and a full skein of a complementary color so i used her color riot mini um skein set and a full skein of her new yorker um colorway the new yorker color which was a gray speckled um yarn um all in fingering weight as well so you don't have to use 12 mini skeins you can easily do it with 10 again this pattern is quite customizable in that sense like it will still be a decent size when it's finished in terms of like its wearability and all of that so um so yeah that's what you'll need and you do use up almost all of the mini skeins so if you're planning on using scraps you want to make sure you have about 10 grams of each um color that you want to use um so there's that and if you only had 20 gram minis and you only say say you only had like five 20 gram minis you could use those but you'd use each color twice in the in the pattern so those are like alternative options and ways you can go about it so i i'm, I'm we're still waiting to confirm the details with nicole of hugh loco i believe she's going to be putting up pre-orders for kits using the same colors that i used for the pattern um but also Kelly of Lay Family Yarns has been really sweet and she's also put together mini skein sets um, for her shop update this at the end of this week. So I'll leave a link to her Instagram so you can go and check that out to see when her shop update is exactly. I believe it's on Friday. I can't remember the time exactly, but um, I believe it's this Friday and I'll leave a link to her Instagram. You don't have to have Instagram. You can check it on a desktop. You just need to click the link and it will take you directly to the relevant post and um and yes i think that's the information i wanted to give you guys about the club and i will also be posting a post about that at the yarn requirements on my instagram hopefully later today i meant to do it yesterday but the time got away from me so moving on to finished objects and the first one i wanted to show you was a pair of socks so i finished these socks um that i knit for my dad 
so these are gonna be for him I did these slightly differently than I've done socks for him in the past oh geez fuzz so I thought I would go over that really quickly I knit this is knit out of Patterns Croy sock yarn in the grey brown mull for the main colour and I used um, Gentry Grey also by Patterns Croy for the cuffs and heels. I chose to do contrasting cuffs, heels and toes not only because it's itself striping. I was going to do toes as well but clearly I didn't. But I also thought I was going to run out of the main colour yarn because the Patterns Croy is a thicker sock yarn. It's like you only get what like 160 yards per 50 gram ball rather than the typical 200 yards so um it's definitely a thicker sock yarn so i didn't think and my dad likes his socks really long as you can see the cuffs are really long so um i, I thought i'd run out and i wanted to make sure i could make the legs nice a nice length for him so i decided to do the contrast but by the time i got to like here on the foot i realized i was going to have more than enough yarn so i didn't bother doing the contrast for the toes um which I think is fine. I did use 2.5 millimeter needles, so a US one and a half. I typically knit my socks my socks on US ones, but like I said, because this is a much thicker sock yarn, I went up a needle size. And what I did then was I typically knit my dad's socks, um, 64 stitch socks. I actually knit 64 stitch socks for everybody in my family, no matter how like wide their feet are. I feel like it gives a nice fit. Um, it works out for everybody, um, thankfully, so far. Um, so what I did was actually with this one I cast on 60 stitches and I knit the leg with 60 stitches. My dad has quite skinny legs. He is, his legs are very skinny but he's got he's got quite a big ankle and his feet are quite wide so it's, very, it's quite disproportionate in that sense but he's got quite skinny legs so I decided to go for 60 stitches on the leg. I did a slightly longer mini heel flap. I think I did maybe a couple of rows extra and then after that rather than decreasing out all of the stitches in the gusset down to 60 stitches again I decreased it down so I had 34 stitches on the bottom of the foot and 30 stitches on the top so overall I had 64 stitches so I knit the foot with 64 stitches for the most part and then over the last 10 rows or so before starting the row before starting the toe I decreased out the extra four stitches on the sole side to get back down to an even 60 30 and 30 and then did my usual toe so I did that giving him a little bit of extra room in the foot around the ankle area um, where I know like sometimes he gets swelling in his ankles because of past injuries and stuff so um, I took that into consideration so hopefully I'm gonna get these to him this weekend I think my mum's definitely coming down on tomorrow night I think my dad might be coming with her I'm, he didn't confirm whether or not he was gonna come as well so um, either way these all get to him this weekend and hopefully he'll try them on and he'll be able to tell me if they fit well or not and then I can knit him because I have another two socks worth of this patterns crow yarn for him to knit so it'd be good to know if that sort of combination of adjustments um, works well for him or not so yeah I thought I'd share that just in case I had someone I think it was Mars from Hey Brownberry um, posted recently on Instagram asking um, for like this shoe size essentially um, what stitch count would you cast on 56 or 64 stitches and my and I get this all the time people who are new to socks send me messages and I know Mars isn't new to knitting socks I'm assuming she was going to be knitting a pair of socks for someone um, or maybe it was a question someone had asked her but um, the, the answer I have to questions like that because I like I said I typically get messages from people who are new to sock knitting being like oh I'm a size whatever what which size sock should I um, which size should I knit um, out of the pattern because I offer seven sizes in my sock patterns um, and I'm like well it doesn't matter what your shoe size is it matters what your foot circumference is your shoe size determines how long you knit your socks not how many stitches you cast on so um, so yeah to say that for a certain shoe size you cast on a certain stitch count actually is the wrong way to look at, look at it because you're um, the two haven't don't actually correlate in any sense um, yeah the, the two aren't relevant you could have a size seven foot um but you and you need maybe a 64 stitch count but you could also have a size seven foot and need a 72 stitch count if you have particularly wide feet um it actually makes no difference um what size your what, what your shoe size is compared to yeah your shoe size does not correlate to how many stitches you cast on um that's your foot circumference 
and your calf circumference correlates to that. So again, going back to my dad's socks that I've adjusted for him, I know he has skinnier legs than he has than his feet, and his feet are quite wide. So I need. I'm pretty sure, like I said, I need need him to try these on. I'm pretty sure that he needs slightly fewer stitches on the leg and slightly more stitches on the foot to fit his feet better. Um, and this is, this is the beauty of knitting your own socks or knitting socks for people that you know that you can make those adjustments and you can take those things into consideration when you're knitting for them or yourself. Um, so yeah, I wanted to point that out because like I said, it's a very, uh, and I can understand why people think that because you're just like, oh, I have a smaller foot so I need smaller, um, a, a fewer stitch count, uh, a smaller stitch count, sorry. And typically that, that would be the case. Typically people with smaller feet tend to also have narrower feet, but that's not always the case. So to say that if you have a size seven foot, you you know, you will definitely need this stitch count isn't necessarily accurate. Um, so anyway, just wanted to put that out there. That's my first finished object. My second finished object, if you haven't already noticed, I am wearing it. This is my Yorkville pullover. I'm kind of sticking with that name for now. I'm not sure if I'll change it. The other name I had in mind was Brick House. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I'll stand up really quickly and try and show it to you. I'm not sure how well this is gonna work where I am, but um, yeah. So, excuse the fact that I'm still wearing my pajama bottoms, but it's been a rough morning. I will get to that later. So as you can see, it's a slightly cropped uh, pull over this is where my natural waist is so it hits just just below my natural waist um, so the front is actually also shorter and it's longer in the back so you can kind of see that little slope there it's not it's not massive but you can see the ribbing at the back is longer than the little bit of ribbing at the front and that was intentional um, it is a set in sleeve construction which is new for me I've not designed anything like this before, so this was really exciting and quite fun. And it was top down, which is really exciting. Um, I really like the neckline. It hasn't been blocked yet, so I do need to block it. So the neckline will sit a bit more like this once it's been blocked. At the moment, it keeps wanting to cinch back up because the texture is, um, I'm not sure how well you can see that. It's really beautiful. I love this texture. I've used it on two other designs so far. So if you've knit the Yorkville socks or the Yorkville hat, <laughs> you sensing a theme um <laughs> then this stitch pattern will be familiar to you but i absolutely love it in this construction when i was knitting the hat i remember thinking to myself this would be beautiful in a pullover and i actually used the exact same yarn that i used for the hat in this jumper so the yarn that i used is um if i can find the tag i know i have the tag there we go it's green mountain spinnery on their music dk base it is um 100 fine american wool two ounce skeins, 58 grams per skein, 180 yards or 165 meters. So it's a woolen spun yarn and it's just this beautiful, sort of like, get it to focus. It's blowing out a bit on camera right now, but it's this beautiful heathered sort of gray, red, I almost said gray, heathered red. It's more this color that you see in the back. There we go. It's more this color in real life, but when I show it up close, it kind of blows out the camera a bit. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's definitely one of these yarns that when you touch it in the skein, you go, that's rustic. That's a little bit, that looks or feels like it might be a bit scratchy. I'll tell you, it is not scratchy at all. It hasn't even been blocked yet. You can definitely, it's one of those, you can feel that you're wearing wool, but it's not irritating. I don't know if you've ever felt that. I've never had that before. Usually if I can feel it, if I can feel it, then I'm like, mm, that side to feel a bit like itchy, a bit uncomfortable wear but this one it is so comfortable i'm just wearing a short sleeve tank top underneath so i have nothing covering my arms or my upper chest area other than obviously like the tank top bit but like this bit isn't covered so it doesn't bother me at all i am not i wouldn't say i'm super super sensitive i think if you're like very sensitive this might be a bit much still but i'm not super sensitive but i'm also not able to wear like i wouldn't be able to wear let low pee next to skin like that is too much for me i've tried on like let lopi like this icelandic let lopi jumpers and they're beautiful but i would definitely have to have like a layer underneath it covering all the best skin because that's just too much that's too much but this is actually very wearable i find it very comfortable like i said this is pre-blocking so i know it will soften up a bit once it's been blocked um like soaking it in some wool wash and stuff will help soften it up a little bit more um and yeah 
anyway i really love it um it's a beautiful yarn to knit with for a garment it's really lightweight i still have um i had i used um about six and a half skeins a little bit a little bit over six and a half skeins of yarn so that's less than 400 grams was, i think i ended up using like 300 and 30 something grams of yarn for this pullover so really um low yardage requirement as well i knit um sort of full length sleeves but like just a little bit longer than wrist like bracelet length um and like i said they haven't this hasn't been blocked yet it's, it is a non-superwash yarn so it won't grow too much and um and yeah i'm just looking forward to seeing what it looks like once it's blocked so just going over some of the details a little bit it's got some short row shaping on the shoulder areas and and that's all in garter because i kind of like that little feature there and then the sleeves like i said they're set in sleeves it's got the panel of the stitch pattern running down the arm and then the actual um short rows for the set in sleeve section are also in garter this bit if you're not a fan of this being in garter you can easily switch that out for stockinette and i'll have notes for that in the design as well if i didn't mention this is a design project of mine <laughs> i'm not sure i actually mentioned that but um if you've been watching previously you'll have seen this one in progress and uh and yeah i knit this with a couple of with a few inches of positive ease so you can obviously pick a smaller size i think when i first set out to knit this it was going to be a full length sort of slightly boxy jumper um and whilst i was knitting it i was like this actually would look quite i think this would look quite nice as a crop jumper so i was sort of trying it on as i was going and i remember posting on instagram asking you guys for your opinion and what you thought whether i should crop it or keep going and the majority said go for it crop it see how it goes i am not the kind of person who usually gravitates towards cropped things in general cropped items of clothing i'm because i'm quite tall i'm about five foot ten um i tend to gravitate towards things that are as long as possible to kind of like compensate i guess i've always had trouble finding things that are the right length for me growing up so um now that i'm making my own clothes i kind of overcompensate for that and make things longer um so i thought i'd give it a go i'm still not 100 percent comfortable but because i originally decided this was going to be a more boxy type of sweater and i went with the crops in the end i went with the crop style it's ended up it's not form fitting which i actually really like um but i will uh so you obviously will pick the size that you want based on the amount of ease that you want so this has like a couple of inches of ease on either side um but you can also pick one with zero ease or even some negative ease if you want a more fitted sort of like cropped jumper um the sleeves are obviously really customizable you just knit them as long as you want them to be and um, i'll also offer some information on uh, shaping if you want to put in some shaping so it's a bit more snug um after the chest area so like, like i said this has no shaping it is just a boxy sort of cropped um jump pullover but i'll offer some um at least some directions or advice on where you can add in some shaping to sort of cinch it in a bit if you want it to be more fitted um, as well in the design. So I still need to write this up. I still need to get it graded and tech edited and then test it and stuff. So I'm hopeful that this will be ready for release sometime towards the end of summer. Um, I do like to give my testers a decent amount of time to work up the samples. Um, so all their versions of the samples so i don't want people to um feel rushed especially because i try to be as inclusive as i can with my sizing so i want to give people knitting the larger sizes as much time as possible as well um so those are my two finished objects that i can show you i have one other finished object but i can't show it to you because it's a secret design and um and yeah so with that we're going to move on to works in progress and again i only have two that i could show you i actually have three the third one's almost finished but it's a secret design so i can't show that to you either um so yeah so for the, the first work in progress is a pair of socks I'm not very far on these i literally just cast on and knit um the two cuffs and then got them on the same needles and that's about that's literally all i've done um these are going to be socks for my dad it is out of west yorkshire spinners in the birds range in the mallard colorway i'm pretty sure this one was mallard i picked this up this yarn up at um the knitting and stitching show in london where i went uh with my mum back at the beginning of march and so this is the tag 
and West Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4 Ply. And it's 75% wool, 25% nylon, and 35% of the wool is a blue face Leicester. So it should be a nice, strong, sturdy sock yarn. And like I said, I'm no longer knitting my dad merino based socks because he just wears through them. He's too hard on his socks. So, and those are on 2.25 millimeter needles. So that's those ones. My other work in progress that I have to show you some progress on is um, the pinwheel scrap blanket that I'm that I am knitting for Layla. So the pinwheel scrap blanket is actually a design that I uh, released a couple of years ago now, and um, is it two or three years ago now? A while ago, anyway, two three years ago, and it's just an alternative scrappy blanket project that you can do. I like it because it's very portable and you're working on like smaller blocks it actually uses less yarn than you need for like a typical mitered square blanket depending on the size of the squares that you're doing but the pinwheel scrap blanket the, the triangles that's what the this is what the triangles look like the the original version the pattern that's published is for fingering weight and if you're casting on according to the pattern each of these little triangles uses less than five grams of yarn so it's actually really good for smaller scraps as well the one that i'm missing for layla is actually out of DK slash worsted slash fingering weight held double yarn. So, um, uh, yeah, this one is all fingering weight held double in this, um, in this square. So I've got two squares actually here. And this one, for example, these, actually almost all of these, these two and these three here up to the yellow are all DK weight yarns. These two are hand spun, which was actually more like a worsted to bulky weight. And this one here is a fingering held double. So, you know, a whole range of yarns can be used in this. And so I actually cast on 20 stitches for this, um, for these blocks, rather than, I think the pattern calls for 30 stitches for the fingering weight version. So these blocks are coming out slightly smaller, but overall still a really good size. I now have five finished blocks. I have three more that I've done. My aim is to have one or two done per month um, this year so by the end of the year uh, or by the time Layla turns three I'll be able to seam them together so she'll have the start of a blanket and then as she grows older I can add more blocks to it to make it bigger and bigger um, until one day she finally has a full-size scrappy blanket for herself and um, and yes yeah, so this one actually these these five colors here I knit her um, uh, what's it her little nugget pullover out of the re the stripy one and then this red one here i is little bean loves yarn uh that i used to knit her the nahid dress which was one of my designs it was her christmas dress for her first christmas so yeah it was really special as well so i'm trying to include all the yarns that i've used to knit her things out of as well um because i feel like that makes it extra special for her and uh, yeah, so those are my works in progress. That is all I have to show you. That's literally all I have on my needles right now are these socks once the other project is finished. I'm just kind of um, gearing up for our trip and um, trying to decide what projects to take with me on that on the trip as well. I have a couple of designs that I want to take with me, but like more sort of easy going travel designs um, and as well as some like more mindless projects as well. So we're going to be gone for two weeks, which is a decent amount of time. And it's a road trip, so there's gonna be a fair amount of in-car time as well. So plenty of knitting time, I hope. And, um, and yeah, so that's it for the knitting content so far. Next up we have spinning, and then I have some uh, acquisitions, but not quite acquisitions to go through, and then some knit along giveaway news, and then finally a bit of a week in review. I should have done this outline at the beginning of the show, but anyway. Um, okay, so for spinning, I actually have a fair amount to show you guys. I My little box of spinning is um, looking quite full. <laughs> so let's start. The first thing I have to show you um, is this lovely um, skein. I'm not gonna take it out because what I've actually started doing is just using the tags that came with the fiber to wrap around the finished yarn because that makes sense, right? Why didn't I do that before? So this was some fiber that I picked up from the Lace Knittery, also from the Knitting and Stitching Show. And it was a gray sort of tweedy fiber. It's 100% merino. And I spun it up and it's a gray tweedy yarn. <laughs> Funny how that happens. Um, anyway, sorry, <laughs> that was a bad joke. Um, I really like how this is spun up. 
and it's really it's a little bit thick and thin it's a bit textured but it, that's the tweedy nature of it and i actually really like it it came out to be it's around 99 grams 218 yards or 200 meters and yeah so it's a decent size skein i'd say this is probably a worstedish weight some thicker bits some thinner bits but really happy overall with how this little back this little skein turned out then I spun up this skein, or this braid rather, from the Shepherd's Hut. And it's 100% Finnish yarn, fibre, sorry, in the Dark Magic colourway. It's 98 grams and uh, I got 174 yards or 159 metres. And it's very much, it's, it's, it's a very dense yarn because even though the yardage is really low, it's really come out more like a sport to DK weight so it's um, quite a dense yarn this one's a three ply so it's a chain plied and um, it's, it's funny because the singles were spinning up really quite fine and I thought the finished yarn would have a higher yardage than it did and I was planning on knitting some like shorty socks out of it or something but I don't think I have enough yardage for that because this, this one is this is what I would call like a really scratchy sort of rustic wool, um, but it would be it would hold up really well for socks. Um, it's quite a sturdy, like as a breed, I think finished yarn would work out pretty well for socks. But I don't think there's enough in here unless I did um, little shorties toe up just to make sure and use like a contrast colour for heels or something. But um, so we'll see. We'll see what this turns into. And then. The next two skeins that I spun up, my intention is to use these together. We will see if that happens or not in the end. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that now that I've finished them, but I think I still might. So the first one I did was, I actually sort of spun them at the same time. I did half on one bobbin, half on another bobbin, and then went back to do this half and then plied it, and then went back and did that half and plied it. So I kind of split it up a little bit because spinning just a bunch of white fiber can get very dull after a while as beautiful as the fiber was to spin it was it literally it was so lovely to spin but at the same time it could be a bit boring to just spin plain white for ages and ages so this one is um 100 polworth top from john arvin textiles so if you remember i showed you some hand spun that i finished last week which was um by spin jones and i uh it was a gradient and I kept the gradient as one ply and then I plied it with um, a ply of this Polworth and so the rest of that I had 200 grams of the Polworth and so for the, for the rest of the Polworth I spun up um, and plied it on itself so it's a two ply and I absolutely love how this is plied up and it's poofed up so much in the wash this was definitely a fingering weight before I washed it and then I washed it and it's now definitely a sport maybe even a DK in places um sort of yarn it's so beautiful it's so soft it actually like i said it poofed up so much it actually lost a lot of its in it shrunk a lot in diameter so i lost a fair amount of yardage on this one once it washed which is quite interesting so it's the first time that's really happened and even though this technically has less um fiber in it like it weighs less the skein than the the green one which i'll show you in a second um it looks like it's more because it's so poofy. Back on there. I mean, look at the poof on this. And these were both wound on the same nitty noddy, so you can see the difference there. Um, I mean, I'm not really sure how well you can see. It. There you go. See, the white one definitely looks like it's bigger than the green. Anyway, so out of this 100% Polworth top, I had 97 grams in this half. Um, in this skein, I mean, I got 341 yards and 312 meters of a sport slash DK. So yeah, it poofed up a lot and I actually really love how this feels. It is like a cloud. It is so soft and pillowy. Generally, I'm thinking of going back and ordering like a sweater quantities worth of this fiber and spinning it up and knitting a really beautiful pullover out of it or something. Um, although I may see a friend who dyes yarn um, would either dye the fibre for me or dye the finished yarn before I knit it up because I think that would be quite fun but um, we'll see I haven't thought that far ahead 
Um, and then the green one that I that I um, tried up as well is a set of Rolex by uh, Felvy Fibers. Genuinely, some of the best Rolex I've ever spun. I've well, actually, yeah, pretty much I've only really spun Rolex by Felvy Fibers and maybe one or two other people. Um, but I really, really love her Rolex. So this is a blend of Merino, Mulberry Silk, Tussa Silk and Baby Alpaca. And it was 110 grams in the wi Winter Weekend Walk um, color set. Um, so it's just a really lovely mix of these greens and whites, to be honest. Really, really lovely. And because of the silk content, this one came out a lot more drapey. And yeah, and also turned out a lot more fine. I found this one drafted a lot thinner um, naturally overall. I mean, there's definitely some thicker bits throughout. Um, Rolags aren't the most, aren't the easiest to spin consistently, but to be honest, I'm not overly concerned with consistency. Um, obviously it would be nice, but it's not my, um, uh, overarching sort of goal to spin a super consistent, super fine yarn. Um, I know I will get there eventually. I'm just enjoying the process and, um. And yeah, I really enjoyed how this one turned out. It's a lot drapier of a yarn overall uh, compared to the Polworth, which was like quite poofy. So I think it would actually be quite an interesting contrast to have these knit up together in a project. Um, I'm not entirely sure what yet, but probably something soon. Um, this was one of the yarns I was thinking about taking on the trip with me, but I'm actually planning on taking the other hand spun that I showed you last week um, the crocus colorway that I'd spun with a ply of this white. Um, I'm actually planning on taking that with me um, instead. So I think this will wait until I get back. So actually I haven't told you yet what I got out of this. So this was 106 grams in the end. I got 445 yards or 407 meters. So definitely, um, and it definitely looks and measures up to be like a fingering weight yarn overall um i'd say also this one is probably slightly underplied and if you follow me on if you follow me on instagram <laughs> you might get an idea as to why i had layla helping me when i was plying this so she was sat on my lap for a while when i started plying this and then um i was a little bit distracted while plying it so it wasn't um the ply wasn't super the plying wasn't super consistent which is fine i actually don't mind these row lags when they're um spun up and slightly underplied. The jumper I knit for Layla out of my hand span was also, that yarn was very underplied. It actually felt like knitting with singles when I was knitting it, that's how underplied it was. And um, this isn't that underplied, but it's definitely under, um, uh, doesn't have as much ply twist in it as it probably should. But that just means it's gonna feel extra soft and squishy when it knits up. So I don't mind at all. So back now with acquisitions that aren't actually quite acquisitions, at least not for me. Um, these are, um, and I'm only showing them because they are handmade, so it's relevant to sort of like the content on this podcast. But my, uh, but Layla actually spent the weekend with my parents a couple weeks, well, yeah, a couple weekends ago. And um, mum, my mum came to the knitting and stitching show with me in London and we picked up some fabrics and stuff for my mum to make a few things for Layla. And so Layla came home with a, her first um, handful, or the first two um, little handmade garments that my mum has made her. So the first one my mum made her is this adorable little top. And this is just the cutest little thing. Uh, it's a little bit, it's got this cute little like gathered pleating bit at the front by the neck. And it's just a little bit short to be a dress but it's quite long as a top on her, which is quite nice because it'll mean it'll last for a while. She'll be able to wear this with shorts or some leggings in the summer. And it's got a cute little tie at the back to, um, for like a closure. And this is just knit out of a, this is knit. <laughs> this was sewn out of just a little jersey. It was like a little, um, it wasn't, it wasn't a fat quarter, but it was like a half meter piece of um, jersey that we found in one of the stalls. And it's just really pretty. And I don't know if my mum used the pattern or what the pattern was called. If she, I, I'm assuming she used the pattern, but I don't know what it is. Um, but that was really cute and adorable. And uh, the second one, and this was again, one that we picked out the fabric at the show. 
is this adorable little dress. How cute is this little dress? So the main fabric, this cactus desert fabric, you might remember from my haul, I got enough of this fabric to use as a quilt backing, but also um, gave some to my mum to make a dress for Layla. And these contrasting spotty green fabrics are leftovers from back when I used to make project bags and I used this fabric as a lining for a bunch of my bags. So she used that as contrasting fabrics for around um, the finishings, like the, bi the bias bindings and the sleeve caps and the tie at the back a cute little button at the neck as well and yeah so my mum actually said she did have a pattern I asked her about it because I had a few questions on it uh, she had a pattern for the top portion which could be modified to be a bit longer or shorter or however you wanted but then she kind of just made up the skirt portion based on Layla's measurements and her size so yeah this looks really cute on her and I'm actually really looking forward to taking this on the trip with us and hopefully she can wear this a couple of times when the weather is nice and warm we're actually going to have a really lovely hot weekend this week so um this weekend so she might even wear it this weekend before we go away as well but I actually think I might want to keep it nice and clean for when we go away so we'll see we'll see how things go but she really liked it um my mum said she showed it to her and her immediate reaction was to give it a hug so that was really cute and I love how much she seems to really appreciate handmade stuff already. I don't know if she really understands that it's handmade, but she really seems to enjoy um, her handmade clothes and knitwear. So that's really nice to see already from a two-year-old. <laughs> so um, those are Layla's little acquisitions, I guess. They're not really my acquisitions, they're Layla's little handmade gifts. All right, so that was really it for the knitting content. Now we're getting on to the more chatty side of things. And um, so we have some knit along news, then a um, bit of a week in review, and then that's about it really. We're gonna wrap it up. Hopefully this won't take too long. But in terms of knit alongs, we currently still have the Seasons Sock Club um, knit along running. That is gonna run until um, probably mid-May, I'll close it out. And then in, um, actually no, I'll leave, let it run until the end of May going to run into the end of May and then at the beginning of June the patterns will all be available for individual purchase so that's going to be exciting I look forward to being able to publish those and um, yeah so if you're knitting any of the designs from that club feel free to head over to the Ravelry group pop it into the chat thread and the finished objects thread I will be drawing prizes at the end of May and so earlier in May I will show you what the prizes are that I've picked out for the club um, I haven't actually picked them out yet but I do have like a big box with all different like prizes and stuff uh, set aside for giveaways in there and um, and then we have the mini licious pattern club like I said at the beginning of the podcast that is going to be kicking off on the 1st of May but as I said the waffle cow is already published and comes as part of the club when you pre-order it so if you have already pre-ordered then you will get the you will have the waffle cow and if you are knitting it you can already you can enter that as well into the knit along um, there are chatter and FO threads up in the group already so you can head over there and check out the rules there aren't a huge number of rules but there are a few and um, yeah so that'll be running until the 24th of September my birthday so even though the last pattern will be released at the 1st of August the, the actual knit along will run until the 24th of September and then um, again I will draw winners at the end as well and um, and then another sort of make along, I guess this one's gonna be, that I will be co-hosting with the lovely Grace of Babbles Traveling Yards is the spin and make along. So shorthand, the smell. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so we're gonna be co-hosting that. So that's gonna be kicking off on Monday the 6th of May, which in the UK is a bank holiday. And it's gonna be running until the end of July, I think is what we talked about, so about three months. And um, and yeah, so that's gonna be really exciting. I've actually got to sit down and I'm actually going to be sit sitting down and filming a uh, sort of an introduction slash prep video for for that. I decided I was gonna do a bit of a vlog series for the spin and make along. So I'm gonna sit down and sort of like talk through my plans and ideas of what I want to be uh, looking to achieve uh, through this make along as well. So essentially, what it works out how it works out is it's split into two parts so the spinning segment is the first three months and then from the first of august um until we said end of november is going to be the make along part of the of the overall along so for the first three months we're going to be focusing on spinning whether it's with a wheel or a drop spindle or supported spindle or ho however you want to spin uh spinning fiber with the idea of using it for a specific project and obviously you can do 
more fiber than that but the idea is at least some of the fiber that you're spinning is with the intention of it being used for a specific project you can change your mind you can you know yeah you can change your mind that's not a you don't have to like stick with what you decided to do at the beginning a lot of the time when i'm spinning something i think to myself oh this would be really good for xyz by the time i finished it and applied it i'm like mm, actually i'm not sure if it'll work for that maybe it'll work for this better kind of like that finished yarn where as i was spinning it as i was spinning the singles i thought actually this might work as like a sock yarn but once i applied it i didn't have enough yardage it's not going to work as a sock yarn so um so yeah things like that um that's fine obviously if you change your mind or something just doesn't quite work out but the idea is sitting down and trying to spin something with the intention of doing something specific with it at the end hope that made sense and so i was going to sit down and do a bit of a planning video for like the things that i have intentions for spinning and what i plan on doing with those finished um spinning projects um in the making section of the smell so i will be knitting my finished yarns but you can knit crochet weave um tapestry or well, i guess that's kind of weaving you can do what you want with it there is no limitation in terms of which craft you can do um now i know not everyone spins and not everyone is able to spin for xyz reasons but if you did want to take part in the making segment you can the only stipulation is that you have to use hand spun be it your own a gift or hand spun that you've purchased so um so yeah there is that i will be also hosting um hosting i'll be giving away prizes throughout the or at the end of the spinning segment i'll be giving away some fiber for people who have been spinning and then towards the end of the spinning segment maybe a month or so beforehand i will um host a giveaway for some hand spun so of my own hand spun so it's not going to be perfect <laughs> and i apologize in advance for the imperfections but i do it for fun and not for um perfection as I do most things in life <laughs> um so i'll be hosting a giveaway for some hand spun and that giveaway will be geared mainly towards people who don't spin and people who um you know can't get hold of hand spun for whatever reason but want to take part in the making segment so the stipulation for that giveaway will be that you are not a spinner and so that you can't normally get your hold of hand spun want to try and include as many people as i can and offer opportunities for those who don't spin but want to take part to be able to take part so um, there again, those of you who do take part, I hope that you would be um, willing to use the hand spun in the making section and, and kind of taking part in the whole community aspect of this. Um, so yes, anyway, <laughs> um, I hope that made sense and I will be going over that in a little bit more detail, I guess, in the first of the vlogs for the smell. So like I said, the first one's gonna be a bit of an introduction and ideas one, and then moving on as the spin along spinning section of the smell starts i will um post more vlogs um throughout the different stages deciding how i'm going to put my fibers together what i'm going to spin or how i'm going to apply it and xyz um kind of like how i do my spinning vlogs at the moment but maybe broken down into more parts or in more detail i'm not quite sure exactly how i'm going to do it yet we shall see it will um it will develop <laughs> over time, I'm sure. Um, and then the last knit along that I'm hosting, so we're quite a few knit alongs going at the moment, um, is a sp sweater cowl. And I call it a cowl, but you can also crochet if you want. But um, I really only think about knitting because that's that's really what I do. But um, I always, so I don't necessarily think about crochet. Uh, but obviously, crochet is always welcome, welcome as well. Um, I am planning on working up a bunch of sweater designs this year, so um, <laughs> what I'm currently wearing. And um, yeah, so I wanted to knit along with you guys. So feel free, you can knit whatever sweaters that you'd like. Um, any designer is absolutely fine. Every finished sweater is a entry into the finished objects thread. And if you knit one of my designs, you get two entries in the finished objects thread. So that's really the only um, stipulations there. And uh, like I said, there are threads in the group already, so you can head over there and check out the rules. And um, like I said, not too many, just a few. Um, and yeah, take part that way. I'm trying to uh, be more interactive on the Ravelry group. It is a bit hard for me. It's not as, um, I like Ravelry as a search engine function for like finding patterns and searching for stuff on Ravelry. I don't find it as intuitive to use for 
like just sitting there chatting with people and stuff. Um, I'm trying to be better at it. I do definitely check the threads every day. Um, I try to answer, to, um, I do answer questions, um, but I also try to hang around and comment and chat to people as well. I'm not great at it every day, but I do try and do it when I can. Okay, so that rounds out the knit along section of this podcast. And now we will move on to the rambling weeks in review segment at the end. So if you're really not interested in what's going on in our lives, then thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you again soon. I will be vlogging over the course of the next couple of weeks whilst we're traveling. How often I will be able to upload while we're away, again, I'm not entirely sure. It just depends on how our internet connectivity is whilst we're away. But um, I'm hoping to at least be able to upload a couple of vlogs whilst we're away so then I don't have as much to catch up with when we get back. Again, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to break it down. I might do one vlog per location, but it kind of really just depends on how long these vlogs end up being. I might break it down more. I might do less. I don't know. Just depends how much I end up recording. Um, but yeah, in terms of weeks in review, so a couple of weekends ago, Layla went to my parents for the weekend again. She had a really great time. I know my parents enjoyed it and Perry and I just enjoyed having a bit of a break, to be honest, just having a bit of downtime. We didn't have any huge plans for that weekend and the weather down here anyway wasn't particularly great. It was better up in London, but it wasn't particularly great down here. So um, we didn't really do a whole month, a whole lot, but it was just nice not having to do anything and not having to wake up early in the morning and all of that. Um, and then on the Sunday that weekend, um, I went to the Socks on the Beach event up in Richmond uh, and that was really, really lovely and I knew I'd have a good time and I'm so glad I went. It was an amazing experience and finally I got to catch up with some people that I'd met before and got to catch up with a lot of new people and especially people who I'd had lots of conversations with online but never had an opportunity to meet before so that was um so that was great and then last week was actually a fairly productive week for me work-wise which has been really good actually I've been getting I've been feeling a lot of overwhelm recently in terms with my work and just in general with life and stuff and I feel like I've come to this realization that I need to not, I need to put less pressure on myself, I guess, to do um, more than I have to in a given day. Like I just have this long running to-do list that never ends because when do to-do lists ever end? There's always stuff to do. Uh, stuff gets taken off the to-do list and then more stuff gets added. So it's just a never ending list of things to do. And um, so I'm trying a new approach where at the start of each day I pick about three to five things on my list which I'm like okay these are the things I would like to get done today and if I get these done then I've had a good day and I kind of go into it with that sort of mentality rather than just looking at this huge list of things that I need to do and then being really disappointed in myself because I haven't done half of it by the end of the day or whatever which is just really impractical just, just it's just really impractical from like a general standpoint is I'm never going to get half of my to-do list done in a day. It's just not feasible. Um, so I feel like as long as I get those three to five main things that I've picked out from my list done in the day, then I feel like I've had a productive day. And um, that's actually really helped like me with how I think about it and just how I think about what I need to do in my product productivity as well. So, um, so yeah. I, that's just a bit of a long-winded way of saying I'm trying to reframe the way I think about things to try and avoid this like to try and avoid feeling overwhelmed as much as I have been recently and um, and yeah and just try not to overcommit myself because that's really when I start to feel a bit stressed out and it's not necessary it really isn't um, uh, this, this past weekend as well we had a bunch of stuff planned which um, we actually ended up having a really lovely weekend, but we had a bunch of stuff planned that ended up changing relatively last minute because of uh, the weather wasn't that great. So um, so that was a shame, but it was fine in the end. And um, we ended up going to a soft play near where my in-laws live and Layla got to play with her cousin Josh and there was this giant bouncy castle. So they had a great time in that. And then later that afternoon, um, uh, Layla's nursery bestie came over for a play date in the afternoon at our house, which was really sweet. And then the weather held up beautifully, so we got to take them out to the park. And they are so cute. They are honestly, basically the same child. They are, their personalities are so similar. It's quite funny. So we were building sandcastles and they both attacked the sandcastles to like knock them down and destroy them at the same time. Like they are basically the same child. 
and it's really cute to see them together as well they're just so they're just so darn adorable um so that was really nice to be able to do that and to be able to catch up with um with her parents as well and and stuff like that and then then what else did we do sunday what did we do on sunday oh that was it we were planning on going on an easter egg hunt on sunday morning but Layla didn't really sleep well Saturday night. She hasn't really been sleeping well lately. Um, we think she's been having nightmares. We're not entirely sure what it is. She doesn't watch anything scary on TV, especially the last few days, actually since the first time she had a nightmare, um, sort of like at the weekend. I've been really careful about what she's been watching just to make sure there's nothing that could potentially be upsetting her. And she doesn't like say anything when she wakes up. She's just crying for mummy or daddy. So I, I can't tell like if it's from something she's seen. Or I, I don't know what it is, but she's been having nightmares recently. And it's been a bit rough, <laughs> I will be honest. She's waking up at like 3, 3.30 in the morning, screaming for one of us to go in and get her. And we have been, we just, we just go in, pick her up, give her a cuddle. And inevitably, like, because we're so tired and we just want sleep, we just bring her into bed with us. But the problem is she won't sleep on the bed between us or next to us or anything. She wants to sleep on, on you like me or Perry. She wants to sleep on top of us. And so I can't sleep on my back. I have to sleep on my front. So I can't sleep if she's on top of me. <laughs> and then if she's on top of Perry, he's like constantly worried that she's gonna roll off and like fall off the bed or something. So he's not able to fall into like a deep sleep either. So either way, one of us is not sleeping particularly great. So <laughs> um, it's, been a bit, it's been a bit rough. It's only been, it's been three out of the last four nights this has happened and last night, um again she woke me up around half three um crying and it's, it's the kind of crying that you know that there's there's fear behind that cry it's not just a whine or anything like that she was she sounded genuinely scared so i went in picked her up and cuddled her and this time i was like okay i'm gonna try and get her to go back to sleep in her own bed and so cuddled her for a while put her back into bed um she wasn't happy about that and then I sort of sat next to her crib on the floor with my arms through the bars, like holding her hand and stroking her hair and trying to get her to calm down. And she did eventually calm down, but she would not let go of my hand. She would not let go. Every time I thought she'd fallen asleep, like her breathing got heavy and she started sounding like she was asleep again, I'd try and like extract my hand <laughs> from her, from her little tiny grip. And she just, double down and like a grip tighter or one time she even pulled my hand further in and then put her head on top of my hand so I couldn't move it so I'm just like great now I'm stuck here um it didn't work she never really dropped off into a deep enough sleep for me to be able to like extract my hand <laughs> and leave the room so after about an hour and a bit trying to get her to go to sleep in her own bed and it just not working i i just like you know what just come into bed with me fine whatever as long as like i get to lie down and not have to sit on the hard floor um because i wasn't in the most comfortable position either so i got her into bed with me and she laid down for about half an hour and then at about half five she decided all right i'm up now like i'm ready to start my day let's take the sleeping bag off let's go let's go play i'm like are you serious <laughs> just go to bed go to sleep um Anyway, so she wanted to get up and then I had to change her nappy and uh, and then I was like, okay, fine. You can just play in your room. I'm going to go lie down. And obviously at this point, Perry is awake as well. Um, so we're just trying to go back to sleep and she keeps running in and bringing her toys to us and running back off. And at one point she comes in and she's like, mommy, let's go. Like, let's go. And I'm just like, okay, well, you can go play and I'll, I'll come, I'll come in a bit. And by this point, it's almost six o'clock and I thought she was just gonna to go to her room, but she just ran up, she just came upstairs. I'm like, great, now I, have, now, I have, now I have to get up. I can't leave her upstairs on her own. Um, so Perry and I got out of bed. We sort of like dragged ourselves upstairs and we pulled out, we've got a duvet. If you can actually see it, the blue on the sofa. Uh, we've got a duvet under that we store in the sofa. Um, and uh, we pulled out the sofa. It sort of pulls out to be like a giant, like a big sofa bed type thing. So uh, we pulled out the duvet, pulled out the sofa, and Perry and I just sort of like cozied up under the duvet on the sofa. Both of us sort of fell asleep at one point and put on CBBS for Layla, and she was running around in her pajamas, and uh, it was just yeah, it was a morning. So we got like a little bit of a nap on the sofa, maybe, but not much. So I'm feeling pretty tired right now. Been I, I did not sleep much. I I didn't fall asleep until after midnight. I'm pretty sure, and I woke up at half three. So I am 
running on empty right now <laughs> so hopefully this podcast is somewhat coherent um whatever this is i know it's just a phase i know she'll get past it it'll be fine but it's um when you're used to your toddler sleeping through the night and then suddenly they're waking up in the middle of the night and not going back to sleep or will only sleep when they're on top of you um it makes it a little bit difficult <laughs> but it's fine it's okay she's um like i said we'll move past it she's also teething at the moment which probably isn't helping i noticed a couple of days ago that her molars are coming in um well, she's got more molars coming in on the bottom of her teeth so i think that's been irritating her as well anyway going back to what i was saying we were planning on going to an easter egg hunt on sunday but like i said we didn't sleep well the night before and at first i thought layla was uh, we thought layla was a bit ill but um later figured out that it was the molars coming in um so we thought we just sort of stay in and we stayed local we went to the park and stuff and we had a good day in the end but it was just a little bit more low-key than we had originally planned and then otherwise we've just been getting busy uh we've been busy getting ready for our trip which is we've been doing a lot of laundry i've kind of like we don't i don't actually typically need to do laundry too frequently which is quite nice but um I'd kind of fallen a bit behind on that so I had a lot to catch up on which is fine but obviously because we're going away I want to make sure that as much of our clothes is clean as possible so we have like everything to pick from and be able to pack um like I said like I said earlier my mum and possibly my dad as well I need to find out if he's definitely coming or not um will be coming down tomorrow night and um so they'll be with us on Friday so this Friday is good Friday and so it's, it's a public holiday in the uk so um i think we're planning on taking layla to there's like a little like easter egg bunny hunt thing in the woods nearby which would be quite fun i've been um planning we're planning on taking her there we'll see if that works out or not and then on saturday i'm really excited because we booked these tickets like way last year way back last year we are going to take my mum and i are taking layla to see the in the night garden live show which is like super exciting. I don't think Layla knows yet, I haven't really told her, but I, even if I do tell her, I don't think she's really gonna get it until we're there. So we're gonna go take her, she's gonna love it, I hope. Fingers crossed, she really likes it. She liked she, she loved it when we took her to see Teletubbies, so hopefully she'll really like it when we go see Upsy Daisy and Iggle Piggle and Macapaka. So, <laughs> so that's gonna be our Saturday morning plans. And then, yeah, and then the rest of the weekend, I don't think we actually have a lot on which is good because like I said we're going to be prepping for our trip making sure we've packed everything I need to go get some more cat litter for the boys we've got a pet sitter looking after them whilst we're away and then we leave bright and early first thing Monday morning I think I think our uh Euro tunnel it is Euro tunnel yeah Euro tunnel crossing is booked uh like around 10 30 or something so we need to be out the house fairly early to get there it's not that far it's about an hour hour and a half drive but it's um you know there can be a bit of a queue to get on the train and stuff like that so we don't want to be running late and then um and then yeah then we're off off on our european road trip adventure which would be fun and um and yeah so thank you so much to everyone who has sent suggestions and tips and ideas places to go things like that and we've we sat down a couple of weekends ago when Layla was up with my parents actually we spent one morning sat down went through all the different messages and suggestions and stuff and um sort of just planned out a rough itinerary i used to be one of those people who was super um detailed about planning trips like i love traveling and i love seeing places and maximizing my time essentially like seeing as much as i can in the time that i have um and so i was always the one whenever we traveled i would like essentially plan everything down to like what we were doing on each day sort of thing but since having Layla and over the years in general I've kind of relaxed a little bit <laughs> or a lot I guess especially since we had Layla so our like travel planning now really revolves around okay how many days do we have in this place what are the things we want to do and then just have a list of things that we want to do that would be reasonable slash feasible to do in the time frame that we have and then just being like okay we'll see what we can fit in when we have this list of things that we can refer to be like okay we have some time this morning or today the weather looks good what can we do that's like outdoors to make the most of the weather and stuff like that and just taking it a little bit more easy a little bit more um leaving a bit more room for spontaneity i guess and also just to be able to play off of Layla's mood and her what she's up to as well and what she's like feeling up to doing 
um, if she's having a good day, then we could probably do a bit more, but if she's having a tired day or she's not feeling great or whatever, then we know we need, we can adjust things based on that as well, as well as how, how we're doing. So I'm trying to, I'm learning to be more flexible with my travel plans and realizing that, you know, you, we can't necessarily, um, do everything in the time that we have and to be okay with that, which is fine. And it is, um, totally okay to do that as well. Um, it's just obviously a different phase of life and um, different, different expectations to deal with, which is, again, totally fine. And uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to this trip. I'm just looking forward to getting away with Perry and with Layla. Perry's been really busy with work and I've been really busy as well. And it's just been, um, it'll just be nice to get away as, a, as the three of us without too many other distractions and be able to just hang out as a family for a while, which would be nice. I guess I'll catch up with you guys on the vlogs and I hope you will enjoy following along on our adventure whether I end up posting those whilst we're away or after we get back or a bit of both um I hope you'll enjoy and I will see you guys again soon all right take care bye